about something. Let's talk about something that is almost universally done wrong. Let's talk about blocking. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about blocks. Okay? Simons. Face me. X block. Let's pretend I'm not just going to kick him in the groin. Okay? Because he's standing in an H stance. But let's pretend Simons is going to do his overhead block, and he's going to do it right. He's going to do an overhead block from far away. Overhead block. Boom. All right. Now, we're practicing this overhead block. He's hopping into my arm. He's trying to bruise me and attack my weapon. Then he's going to stay there? Right? No. Of course he's not. He's going to block and recover. Boom. He's going to come back. See that? Ready to go. So when we're driving and doing this, we're teaching ourselves to do something wrong. Look at me! Right? So that's bad. But here's what I really want to talk about with blocking. We talk about blocking like that. Show them an outside block. We talked about that. Show them a low block. You notice I did not do a front kick there? I will. What the heck? Low block. Good. Theoretically, you could kick, you could knock my fist out, put a kick out of the way. It's real. You can do that. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm saying it's not the best way to block a kick. It's not the best way to block a kick. So why would you do it? Well, you do it only if you got nothing else. That's when you do it. Why would we teach it first then? Low block, block that kick. Why do we do that? Well, we do that two reasons. One, because we don't understand what kicks are, or blocks are really about. Or we do it because we're trying to teach a theory of concept of zones and hopefully like we do in our system, we don't say you block a front kick with this. We say you can block down at a punch to the belly, you can block a front kick if you have to, or you can recognize what a low block really is. Where does the overhead block, the outside block, and the low block come from? An X block. And what is an X block? Grab my hand, Sire Miles. Collapse down. Grab. Collapse. Up, grab, collapse out. Suddenly, we're in a self-defense zone. Suddenly, we're right here, and the blocks are still working, because now the blocks are doing what? Scraping off. And in our system, we scrape off by slamming in, and we, sla sla we, we scrape off by slamming in and out. In and out. You can collapse onto the arm, or you can collapse under the arm and scrape. You can do both, collapse on, roll under, sprint, okay? But that's why one hand's on the outside for blocking. That's why the outside arm for the overhead block, the outside block and the low block are on the outside of the other arm because this arm's getting grabbed. In a self-defense situation, I'm here. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, wham, right? Now I do that again and he doesn't like that. Leave me alone, bam, right? Oh no, what am I doing, right? So that's why if I'm not going to do a low block to get out of this, go ahead, go ahead, punch it. Bam! Right? I got to move with my low block because, but on this hand, I can do this. Boom! That gets in the way of that punch, too. So as he grabs me and throws his punch, boom! Overhead block gets in the way of both. I'm so close, we're grabbing and punching, and I'm throwing his arms up, and I'm attacking and striking and driving through. It's great. Now you're using a block a little bit more like what it's supposed to be, a little bit more like what self-defense is, okay? Guys, this isn't new. 1,000 years ago, people still built, beat people up. People still attack people by doing this. When these people invented these martial arts, that was still happening. Fighting has changed. Sport has changed. Sophistication has changed. You know what hasn't changed? The reality of what you have to do to beat a person up. You've got a body, I've got a body, I've got these weapons, you've got these weapons. How am I gonna hit you from out here? I'm not. And if I'm attacking you, why do I want it fair? I don't. None of that's changed in 10,000 years. Okay? So these things are not new. These things were forgotten by many and now are being rediscovered by some. But in some of our systems, and I pat ourselves on the back here for American Bond, but we never forgot. We've been doing this since 1958. 
okay? This is part of it. Okay? The reality is, in combat, in self-defense, you're here. That's why we teach elbows and knees. That's why we teach punching and kicking. That's why we teach headbutting. Because the fact is, you're going to be in close, close quarters for self-defense. That's just the reality of it. So you need to think, I'm not blocking. I'm not certainly not blocking this. Right? Nobody does that outside of really bad 80s movies. Right? If you were a world champion Taekwondo kid who just wanted to mind his own business in Southern California, I guarantee you some punk was going to come at you with a knife like this in an 80s movie. Ah! Right? Yeah, but no one ever did that in real life. Okay? Even now, with the evolution of bad guys using knives, they're coming in at an angle to try to get inside a bulletproof vest. They're not just, who wants to stab you on the top of your head? Well, I don't, I'm really not sure what they think is going to happen there. But, so you don't overhead block because somebody's going, rrr, 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 right? It doesn't happen. Okay? But if I'm punching your face, right, we start far away because, boy, it's easier. We have more time. So if I'm going to punch your face, your arm can come in and up. Boom. Okay? Great. No problem. But let's say that is actually what happens. And you do that. Ah! Got your hand. Ha-ha! I'm going to punch you. He just puts his hand underneath mine or collapses down on it. Boom. Right? Or he steps with that low block and knocks it away. But that low block still has to come in and down and up. Okay? Or in and out. Okay? But even then, a little different. Okay? We don't really do that one. We kind of do this one, circle, small circle. Okay? So that's another application of your blocks. Not from far away, from close. All your blocks are scrapes. They're not just attacking and punching with the forearm. You're also scraping off, scraping down, scraping out, okay? Another application of the block. And that's why blocks have to be strong. That's why they have to be powerful, and that's why you've got to punch with them. Because you're knocking somebody's hand off your arm. And you're not going to knock somebody's hand off your arm by grabbing, by trying to do a parry. Okay? You're not. You're not. Doing a slip isn't going to knock this hand off fast enough. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things I can do besides block. I can do this. <laughs> That's one of the easy things I can do. But if I want to do that slip, I can do this. Right? And that was easy. <laughs> right? But that's different. That's not blocking. They're also harder, and they're a little more fine motor, and you need to have a little more experience before you start doing that. So start by knocking things off of you when people try to grab you. Smash them. That's what the blocks are. The truth is, if you want to block Punches and kicks, you're choosing the wrong thing. Anybody who fights in blood sport type sports will tell you blocking can work, but it is wiser and much more advisable to slip, parry, dodge, weave, okay, bob, okay, pat and parry. Boxers, kickboxers, right, slips, slips. Right, bobs, weaves, right, movement, staying out of the way, way better at the punching range than right, way better, way better, because this is too reactive, too strong, too power based, too hard to bring it back in. So you've got to be a little more relaxed so you can have a little more speed because you're reacting, not acting. Reaction is slower than action by definition. Therefore, you need the most speed you can have. Eventually, you're going to fall behind the punches and get popped. Okay, so there is another way of applying blocks. They're actually scrapes. Same technique, block your punch, scrape your hand off. Same technique, and you'll notice that it's even more important to chamber when you're scraping, because you've got to pull at the same time you push if you really want them to let go. You can't just put your hand on your mm, 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 right there hand. I'm gonna push you up, don't let go. Really don't let go unless I make it. Yeah. Ah. Meanwhile, he's kicking me and punching me. Now, this hurts his arm and it hurts my arm. So it's not like I'm just bleh, not doing anything. It hurts. I'm, I'm going to bruise myself tonight doing this for you guys. doesn't matter. But if I just do this, he can start punching me and everything else, right? So that doesn't work because I'm leaving my hand here. But if I pull this hand back at the same time, it's a whole lot harder to hold on to. And I didn't even shove my arm for it that time because I didn't want to accidentally shelf him and hit him in his face. But you've got to pull and push. So that chambering, high and tight chamber, 
suddenly takes on a whole new application. I'm not high and tight chambering because this is the best way to punch somebody. I'm high and tight chambering because I gotta put my hand back to make somebody let go. And then when they let go and my chamber's high and tight, I can send it straight back in with a punch, straight punch, because I'm turning and leaning and pushing and pulling and moving and shifting and generating power through my stances. Oh, it all works together. Yes, it does. Now, 